The Dow leads gains on Wall Street for the second straight day as investors remain optimistic ahead of the release of the all-important June CPI print later today. Asian markets trade mixed while the GIF Nifty indicates a flat start for the Indian market. Oil hits a 10-week high. Brent nears $80 a barrel as supply cuts and prospects of higher demand from developing countries pushes prices higher. And the GST Council decides to impose a 28% GST on full value of online gaming, horse racing and casinos. The industry calls it a killer blow, says it will wipe out companies and lead to job losses. A CNBC TV18 poll sees June CPI inflation edging up to 4.6% versus the 4.25 in May as tomato prices shoot up, reversing the recent trend of falling food prices. Industrial output for May is likely to come in higher at 4.87 versus 4.2% in June. IT heavyweights TCS and HCL Tech kick off the earnings season for nifty companies today. TCS may deliver a muted show in what is traditionally a strong quarter, while a CNBC TV18 poll sees HCL Tech reporting revenue growth of just under a percent in the first quarter. Hi guys, good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast. I'm Pavitra. Those are the top headlines that we have for you. There's lots of news flow that has come through in domestic markets as well as in global markets. But first up, let's just start uh, with, you know, what's going on across the global screens right now. We did get a good handover from Wall Street, but the Asian markets are pretty mixed right now as things stand at the open. So you have the Hang Seng, which is, you know, doing quite well. That's up 240 points, 1.3% higher. So that market looking quite strong. Taiwan just about managing to stay in the green. And the other market which is holding up is the straight. So that is up around four tenths of a percent. But barring those three, you are seeing some cuts come through. So the Nikkei market is the one suffering the biggest loss right now. It's down around one percent. You have the Kospi also, which is trading uh, mildly in the red. No big cuts there, but it is a little bit in the red. And Shanghai also seeing a cut of around two tenths of a percent. So that is what the Asian markets are looking like right now. Extremely mixed picture. The GIF Nifty will come up for you. It is indicating that the start for our own markets will be very muted. Um, and, you know, perhaps extremely flat over there. Just around six points is where we're at on the GIF Nifty. That's uh, what's happening across Asia. But let's also talk about the U.S. markets now because Wall Street ended Tuesday's trading session higher ahead of the June inflation report. We had the Dow, which saw quite a good move. It was up 300 points. The S&P 500 was up around 29 points. And the tech-heavy Nasdaq, like you can see, saw a move of around 75 points higher at the close. We have CNBC's Bertha, who's standing by to bring us all of that action from Wall Street. Markets ending higher as traders await key inflation data. The Dow tacking on about 317 points, nearly 1% on the day. The S&P was up about two-thirds of a percent, while the Nasdaq was higher by about half a percent. Microsoft now one step closer to acquiring Activision Blizzard. A federal judge ruled in favor of the tech giant, denying a request from the Federal Trade Commission to block the $69 billion deal for the gaming firm. CNBC's David Faber reports this afternoon that it is increasingly likely that the deal will be able to close as soon as Monday. Bank of America is being ordered to pay more than $250 million for deceptive practices. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau accusing the bank of double dipping on fees, withholding credit card rewards, and opening fake accounts for years. The bank will pay more than $100 million to harmed consumers and $150 million to the CFPB and the Office of the Comptroller. That's the situation here in the U.S. Now back over to you in Mumbai. All right, Bertha, thanks a lot for getting us all of that action from Wall Street. But let's also bring you some important market opinion. This comes in from JP Morgan Asset Management's Gabriela Santos, as well as Cantor Fitzgerald's Eric Johnston. Listen in. We agree that there's a disinflationary process in place on its own. No need for further hikes. But given the Fed is intent on doing so, I think the important information around the super core is whether we're seeing a normalization in prices, confirming the soft landing narrative recently that's propelled cyclicals higher, or if perhaps if we miss too far on the downside, we're slowing down too much, hard landing fears resurface, or if it pops higher, we're reaccelerating too much and we're at risk of a policy error. So it needs to be just right and oh, miss okay. just enough.
There's clearly a lot of speculative forces that are in the market. The market's got a lot of momentum. And I think if I was just looking at price, I didn't know anything about fundamentals, I would tell you that stocks look attractive. But there are fundamentals. And ultimately, I think owning stocks and playing that momentum, the speculation is playing with fire because the fundamental backdrop um, is extraordinarily poor. Valuations right now are at excessive levels relative to rates and on their own. Um, the economic risk, the economic risk is one-sided, meaning there's not some idea where the economy is going to take off from here. The question is, is it going to hang on to this low growth or are we ultimately or when are we ultimately going to go into recession? All right, that is some important market opinion that is coming in. But with that, let's also bring you the final update on our global market wrap this morning. European markets also ended Tuesday's trading session higher. So we saw the CAC index leading the gains. Uh, the 100-stock index gained over 1%, so that one did quite well. The German DAX was up over 100 points as well, 110 points over there. And the FTSE was largely unchanged, pretty flat um, at the close. In terms of some data that came through, wages in the United Kingdom grew at a record pace, so they came in at 7.3%. Uh, this is versus the street estimate of around 7.1%. And uh, this actually, you know, of course, piles on pressure on the Bank of England. So that is an important data point that came through from the UK. The country's otherwise tight labor market showed some signs of easing as unemployment rose to 4% from the 3.8% that we had earlier. And in some more data that we're tracking from the region, we saw the sterling, which edged up to a 15-month high versus the US dollar. But UK bond yields did see a slip in the trading session yesterday. So that is what we're tracking in terms of the global market action. But let's now talk about how all of these cues really impact our own markets, everything that you should track ahead of the open today. We have our research team here, Nigel, Vivek and Surbi are all here to prep you up for this trading session. Guys, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, Vivek, coming to you first, today is very important in terms of domestic and global queue. So take us through everything we should track. Well, absolutely. And, you know, uh, the good part is we are starting off on a positive note, given the fact that overnight queues, both from U.S. as well as Europe, have been quite positive. Uh, you know, what's actually happened is that crude prices yesterday jumped to a 10-week high. And, you know, almost uh, Brent futures jumped almost 2.2%, uh, closer to the $79.4 the barrel mark. Now, coming to the Indian market, uh, you know, it's going to be important to see you know, whether this particular rally can sustain. Last two trading sessions, it's been reliance that's almost single-handedly lifting the Nifty and keeping, you know, market spirits higher. But, and yesterday, you know, ended at a fresh 52-week high, aiding the rally as far as the Nifty is concerned. However, you know, financials, past couple of trading sessions have been underperforming. And yesterday, you know, they saw an extended or further selling pressure in the last hour of the trading session. And the Nifty Bank, therefore, underperformed. Of chemical stocks, you know, one particular pocket to continue to keep an eye out for. Yesterday, all of them underperformed. And it will be interesting to see whether, you know, the sell-off that started yesterday or over oh, the last couple of trading sessions continues. But a lot of important cues, like you rightly mentioned. Number one today, you know, we'd be watching out for both the CPI as well as the IIP data. Both of it would give important cues. A result season, you know, starts off in full swing. Both TCS as well as HCL Tech would be declaring the results. And today, you know, we will also see a lot of index-related flows coming in on account of the HDFC Limited HDFC Bank merger that comes into effect tomorrow. So watch out for, you know, a lot of action as far as the Nifty Sensex, Nifty Bank, as well as the Nifty Next 50 constituents are concerned. A lot of constituents would be impacted on the back of both weight rebalancing as well as fresh entries as well as exits. All right, Vivek, thanks a lot for laying out all of those cues for us. Let's also talk about the individual stocks. Of course, like Vivek mentioned, earnings season kicks off, so the entire IT pack will be in focus. But Surbi, the big news came through on online gaming. That's correct. So the big news came through on online gaming. The GST Council has now levied a 28% tax on online gaming, casinos and horse racing. So Delta Corp and Nazara Technologies will be in focus. PVR Inox also will be in focus as the GST Council has agreed to reduce the GST on food and beverages at cinema halls at 5% from the previously 18%. Other than that, Happiest Minds will also be on our radar. The company launches a QIP at a floor price of 972 rupees per share. Sources said that the company is going to raise up to 500 crores via this QIP. Satpachintan Pharma, the board has approved a fundraise of up to 200 crores via various modes of uh, capital raise. Uh, Lupin is also on our radar. The company receives an establishment inspection report from US FDA for Pitambur manufacturing facility. And as you all mentioned, uh, the whole IT pack will also be in fo focus on the back of the results. And apart from that, we'll also be watching out for Anandrati Wealth. They will also be declaring the Q1 F524 results. Right, Surbhi, thanks a lot for that entire list of stocks. Finally, let me hand it over to Nigel. 
Uh, Nigel, uh, take us through how it's looking for the futures and options space. Well, yesterday, the weekly expiry period for the Nifty Financial Services Index, and that's the reason why we did see that sharp sell-off in the last 30, 35 minutes or so. Well, uh, that uh, graph that comes up for you is telling you the clear story. On the Nifty, we saw a bout of short covering that played out. The open was down, but close to around a percent and a half. The FIs, well, they lighten their positions both on the short as well as on the long side, but they continue to remain net lock on this index, with close to on 72% of their positions on the long side. There were two strikes that were very, very active yesterday, the 19,500 call and the 19,400 uh, put out there. Just plugging in those numbers, you get the range. On the downside, the 19,360, that's the crucial support for the day. While on the upside, the 19,540, well, that'll be a bit of a resistance zone. Remember the last five trading sessions, numerous times we've gone about that 19,500 odd mark, but we can't hold on to those levels and the recent highs come up for you on the screen. The gift nifty is suggesting that we start off in the green. Holding on to that green is going to be important. In fact, now it's uh, suggesting a more or less flattish start. So we have the range for the day. At the upper end, you'll want the Nifty to hold about that 19,500 odd mark. And given that the IT index could really be more or less consolidation or maybe a bit of a downtick getting into those numbers, I'll be watching the Nifty Financial Services Index as well as the Nifty Banks. They had a down session yesterday. Can they bounce back today? All right, that is the key question. Let's see how that shapes up. Nigel, Vivek, as well as Surbhi, thank you very much for joining us with the trade setup. With that, we're going to get into our first break on the show. But when we come back, like we told you, the GST Council has decided to amend the laws and impose 28% uh, GST on full value of online gaming, horse racing and casinos. More on that in just a bit. Hey guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. Now, the big news that came through yesterday, the 50th meeting of the GSE Council concluded and the panel said that online gaming, horse racing and casinos will now all attract a tax of 28% and this will be levied on the full value of funds that gaming companies charge to their customers. The tax will take effect after amendments are made to the GST law and the CBIC chairman did clarify that 28% GST will be imposed on the value of chips in casinos. Remember, this has been a contentious issue you know, for a while now. And in fact, the council had also set up a group of ministers to really discuss this, uh, this issue. So let's listen in to what the finance minister had to say, as well as what the CBIC chairman Vivek Jory had to say on this matter. There will be some amendment to the GST law to include online gaming um, also in it. Um, and uh, simply put, you can of course seek clarification when you ask questions. Simply put, online gaming, horse racing and casinos will be taxed. They will be taxed at 28% each one and they will be taxed on full face value. With regard to casinos, the decision has been that it would be, first of all, the rate of tax, like Honorable FM just clarified, would be 28 percent. 
and it will be uh, applicable to the value of the chips that a person who buys you know, before playing in a casino. So it's the purchase value of the chips on which the tax will apply. All right, so 28% GST tax will now be levied. Uh, in fact, the online gaming industry has described the imposition of, of this move as a killer blow. We spoke to Joy Bhattacharya, who is the Director General of the Federation of Indian Fantasy Sports, as well as Roland Landers, the CEO of the All India Gaming Federation, to get in their views on the decision. So let's listen in to some of those comments. Extremely unfortunate and terrible for the industry. Uh, I'd just say two things. First and foremost, it's 28% and that's that's high. But also the fact that it's on full value and not on gross giving revenue. Consumers now do not have an opportunity for the amount of money that they play with. They will get far less in return and for a game of skill as well. Secondly, uh, almost $4 billion of, you know, for FDI was supposed to come in into this industry. Now looking at this, it's this completely retrograde step. Uh, you can see that that capital is very unlikely to come into India. The startups in this sector will not be able to survive. This would not benefit anybody. The entire, entire industry, we know, would get wiped out. The thing is also that uh, the only ones to benefit from this would be the illegal offshore you know, gambling uh, companies and their offerings. And that is something that we at the age of have been fighting for the last uh, seven, eight years. But those are the guys who would benefit because, you know, none of them pay any taxes here. But here, the Indian bred uh, SME and, you know, uh, uh, startup communities and companies uh, that have, you know, come to the fore over the last 10 to 12 years, they would be completely wiped out. And, uh, you know, millions of job losses as well. All right, clearly widespread unhappiness with that move, um, with the, you know, the decision to impose 28% of GST on online gaming. But actually staying with the GST story, in a positive surprise for multiplexes, the GST Council has reduced the tax on food and beverages served at cinema halls. So this has come down to 5% from the 18%. And this comes after the Multiplex Association of India had sought a reduction in the tax amid confusion fueled by reports of cinema halls getting notices over the GST that they were charging. The move was also welcomed by the industry, of course, with PVR INOX CFO Nitin Sood saying that the clarification of the rates will solve an industry-wide issue and help in the revival of the theatre business after the COVID pandemic. So that is everything that came through from the GST Council meeting from the listed space. Of course, positive for INOX, uh, PVR INOX and negative for names like Delta Corp and Nazara Tech. But with that, let's move on and talk about the big queue, which is that the earnings season kicks off today. This is the Q1 earnings season and IT heavyweights TCS. Um, and HCL Tech are both due to report their numbers today. So let's start off with bringing you what we can really expect. Reema is here with that. Reema, let's start with TCS. Take us through what the street is expecting this time around. Well, this is the first press conference which will be addressed by K. Kritivasan, who became the CEO of the company from 1st of June. Uh, and given the difficult environment that we're in, it's likely to be a very muted quarter. In fact, this could be the weakest June quarter growth for the company in more than a decade, ex of the COVID year. So the reason for uh, that is the uncertain macro environment, verticals like BFSI, uh, you know, retail, uh, telecom, high tech, they've all been hurting. Projects are getting uh, deferred. Uh, discretionary spending is getting canceled. So when you run us through, when you run you through the numbers, constant currency revenue growth at 0.2%, that's pretty flat. Dollar revenue growth up half a percent on a quarter on quarter basis. Because of the wage hike impact, margins are likely to contract by more than 100 basis points to 23.4% and profits will be down 4.5% quarter on quarter. The silver lining is the deal wins have been very strong. In this quarter, there was one deal cancellation by Transamerica, but there were uh, you know, many other companies like Nest, UK's largest work pension scheme, Marks and Spencers. There was a deal with Phoenix Groups. There was a large BN BSNL deal. So the deals have been very good and the hope is that the, this will, these strong deal wins, the order pipeline will fuel growth in the subsequent quarters. So the question is, is an H2 recovery on the cards or is there a risk of downside and even focus on management transition? All right, Reema, thanks a lot for taking us through all of the, those expectations. And of course, it'll be interesting to hear what the new CEO has to say as well after the numbers. Uh, but Reema, HCL Tech will also be reporting its Q1 numbers today. And the stock is definitely going into it extremely weak. Uh, take us through what we should watch here. 
Indeed, HCL Tech stock has corrected over the last four trading sessions. The street is expecting a very weak quarter. Uh, let me tell you what the consensus numbers are. A dollar revenue growth of 0.9%, a constant currency revenue growth of 0.4 to 0.5%. But given the way the stock has sold off, I think it's uh, penciling in a much weaker quarter. Margins are likely to be down 30 basis points. There is no wage hike impact, but it's pure negative operating leverage, which could hurt the top line. The key is going to be their FI24 guidance, likely to remain unchanged, which means a constant currency revenue growth of 6 to 8% and EBIT margins in a range of 18 to 19%. The key to track will be uh, the deal wins because the deal wins for the company have been very, very robust. Outlook on margins going ahead and general macro environment. How is the decision making? Uh, are the deals getting converted? They are in the pipeline, but are they getting converted? Outlook on individual verticals which have been under stress like uh, you know high tech, communications. So the street is going to be watching out for management comments and corporate behavior which could fuel whether a recovery is on the cards in the second half. Back to you. All right, Rima, thanks a lot for taking us through all of those expectations from TCS and HCL Tech. Of course, you know, we will uh, we will have Rima to really analyze all of the numbers when they come through in the evening. But for now, we do need to get into a short break. Up next, the June CPI and May IIP numbers are also due today. So there's lots to expect in the macro front as well. We'll get you the details in just a bit. Hey guys, welcome back to Power Breakfast. Like we were telling you, some important macro data is also expected today. So the CPI inflation print for the month of June will be out. And a CNBC TV18 poll suggests that inflation may have risen to 4.6%. This is for the month of June versus the 4.25 that we saw in May. And this is likely to be led by the soaring tomato prices that we've all been talking about and may hit the recent trend of decline in food prices that we've been seeing since the beginning of this year. Meanwhile, the IIP data is also, you know, due today and the industrial output data, this is for the month of May, is uh, expected to come in at 4.87%. This is up from 4.2%, which we saw in April. So that is the data which is due. It will come out later in the evening and we'll, of course, bring you all of the highlights right here on CNBC TV 18. But with that, we're going to wind down on this edition of Power Breakfast with the news that the Asian markets are still extremely mixed. Hansen doing well. Nikkei is down around 8 tenths of a percent. And the other Asian markets not really showing too much of a move right now. The gift nifty indicates an absolutely flat start for the open. Uh, thanks for tuning into Power Breakfast. We have Bazaar Morning Call up into.